Hello guys, uh, Vin here, showing you guys the K50VN V3 that I'm going to launch from skylumen.com tonight and uh, also CPF, okay? So first off, let's take a look at this huge reflector here. It's all reflector and a tiny LED sitting at the bottom of the light. You can tell this light is made for throw, okay? The whole purpose of all that reflector surface area is to focus the beam down to a very uh, intense hot spot and throws it down a long way. Okay, this is the first light that I'm releasing with the new, brand new uh, LED from Cree. It's called the XHP35HI. The HI stands for high intensity, which basically means it's a, a domeless LED from the factory. Okay, um, so what makes this light special? Several things. Okay, let's first talk about uh, performance. So this light is priced about, for my version, priced around $250. At this price range, you can get a, a TN32VN or you can get a TK61VN, both of which puts out around 500K lux, okay, give or take, 10%. This light was measured by me with my meter at 530K lux, so very comparable to the TN31VN, uh, TN32VN, I'm sorry, the TN32VN and the TK61VN. So all three lights, about the same price, puts out about the same output. But this light here, okay, puts out a whopping 2300 lumen, while the next, the next up TK61 only put out 1300. So it puts out a whopping 1000 lumen more than the, the next competitor. So having the same amount of beam intensity and upping a thousand lumen is huge, okay? So, it's a very, very big step up, okay? Almost revolutionary in terms of output and throw combined from a single LED, okay? I'm, I was very impressed. Um, the LED was driven very hard from the factory, so I left that alone, okay? I, um, I only upgraded heat sinking. I added extra copper, thermal paste, and um, touch up several, uh, several key things, but the light is essentially the, uh, the circuit is essentially untouched because it's driven very hard from the factory already, okay? Uh, it has a very cool user interface, all right? There's a switch in the back here. Click to turn the light on, and then you rotate this ring in the back to go through all of the different uh, settings, okay? So right here, you can see that the light starts out on low, and then if I turn on the ring here, it will go through different levels. This is a magnetic uh, ring, okay? It's not connected to the circuit. It's uh, controlled by um, alternating the magnetic field over a bunch of um, transistors. And there you have strobe standby. So you can have you can turn on or off the light without using the rear switch by just going to to strobe or over over at turbo, and then you can swap it over to uh, standby without having to reach for the rear switch. You can have the light off if you want. But the rear switch would be wise to uh, cut the power, okay? Uh, with the light, even if you're on standby, but you have the switch on, you see in the rear here, there's a green light. That indicates that the light is on standby. If you click the switch, the physical mechanical switch here, the light will turn off, on, off. So, th so there it lets you know that the light is on standby or not on standby, okay? Um, so basically, you can turn the ring to any level you want before you turn on the light and you have exactly that light, there are no surprises. If you turn it all the way to the right, you turn it on, you know you're gonna get strobe, okay? You turn it two level over, you know you're gonna get high. So there's no surprises. You can set the light to whatever predestined modes that you want and then flip that switch and you know you're gonna get that mode. There are no surprises. You're not going to blind yourself in the middle of the night because you can flip it all, even though it's a huge light, it's, it's on the lowest mode, it's extremely dim. And if you turn that all over to the left and hit the switch, you have an extremely low, low, um, almost moonlight, okay? And, and you're never surprised with the UI. Very consistent UI, okay? I love this user interface. Uh, some people complain that because it's a bigger light and there's a switch in the back, you have to use two hands to turn it on. That is not true, there's a standby here. So if you're using the light, you can just rotate the ring, and I'm doing this with one hand. The ring is, is it has a good resistance, but not tough, okay? So look, I can turn it on or off, on or off, with just one hand, and it's on standby. The parasitic drain is extremely low, so you don't really have to flip the switch, if at least during operation, okay? And then you can flip that when you're done and holster it, okay? 
Um, let's see if I missed out anything. There is a magnetic charging system here. Um, personally, I have not tried out the uh, the magnetic system, the magnetic charging uh, cables that goes on here and charge the batteries on the inside. So I can't recommend it. Okay. Ace Beam or uh, Sub Beam in the past have had some issues with their magnetic charging system. For example, the older, the very older K60. I haven't tried out this new K50 charging system, so I cannot yet recommend. But uh, I think it's, I think if there are bugs, it should be solved out by now, and um, I will add an update to see how good the rear charging system is. But until then. I would just take out the cell, put them in a charger, and that way is safe, okay? Um, the light does not require uh, high intent, a high um, IMR1650 cells, the high discharge cells. The reason is because you have four cells driving just one LED, so the loads shared among the LEDs are relatively low, and you don't need the higher current draw cells, okay? Okay, that is all I have to say. Let's take this light outside and see how good of a range it puts out, okay? And uh, from playing with the uh, cam, I'm using my camera phone today. And from using my camera phone for a couple of videos, I can tell that the phone steps down a lot. So it's seemingly brighter in real person than the camera suggests, okay? So you can see here the beam intensity is very high. This is why we call these types of light dedicated thrower. That tree there across the street is about 150 feet away. Okay, about the same distance here. Also about 150, 200 feet maybe. And yes, you can see here that this is an extremely good thrower. It's almost a laser beam of light. And the only to put out this level of lux at 2300 lumen. This LED in this light is definitely revolutionary as opposed to a, a small evolutionary step up. It's priced reasonably well too. All right, that will be all. Oh yeah, let me go through the different levels. So let's start at the lowest mode. <laughs> you can see here, even on the lowest mode, you can see the hot spot, very, very tight, okay? And the low mode here is almost a moonlight. You can look directly at it and it doesn't really hurt your eyes. Okay, one up. There's six different constant brightness level. And then there's standby and then you have a strobe. The strobe is a variable um, frequency strobe. All right, guys, that'll be all for this light. Um, hope you enjoy the video. I love this light. Okay, bye-bye.